Hello, welcome to C Sharp version 6 features, part 10, Await in Catch and Finally Blocks, brought to you by Anglo Technologies. My name is Harish. In this session, we are going to learn one of the most important and key feature in the C Sharp version 6, that is Await in Catch and Finally Block. And in the C Sharp version 5, uh, it was not possible to call the async operations in the catch as well as finally blocks too. And that was due to the some of the implementation issues in the C-Sharp compiler itself. But now in the C-Sharp version 6, we will be able to call the await operations in catch as well as finally blocks. And this was like a boon to a developer from the Microsoft engineers where they can do certain async operations when they encounter any exceptions or also wanted to do some async cleanups in the finally block. To understand this right now, we'll jump into Visual Studio and we'll start coding and let me take example of reading a file which is stored locally in my machine for example I'm having a folder called read and write inside that I'm having a txt file let me open this txt file here you can observe it's having a content link like allo and pro now I want to read this content via program how do I do that to do that let me make use of the stream reader class okay what the stream reader class does is it uh, reads the file, reads the content which is present in the file. What I have to do is I let me create an object of this is equal to new stream reader. To the stream reader, let I want to pass the file path. Okay, and the file path, let me go back and copy the file path. It's this is the file path. Let me come here and let me paste it. I remember the file name, file name is angpro dot txt and I want to make use of regular exp uh, escape sequences sorry and fine and this stream reader class is having a method called read to end which reads the complete document okay file sorry what I'm giving to it okay uh, let us see the return type of this read, uh, read to end it's written in the string let me store it in some variable string s is equal to okay and let me print that variable such that it will print the content on the console screen and let me once my reader object reads the file uh, then I want to disable it or close it okay stream reader is having a method to do that work okay now when I run this piece of code what it does it just go to this file path and reads this text okay and the build has started you can observe here at the bottom left bottom and once it is completed it will print uh, the content allows allow ang pro on the console screen and that's my objective okay yes it has printed okay suppose if I wantedly make a mistake in giving the file name okay here the, the uh, original name was ang pro.txt now I'm removing O at the end and let me run this obviously it will give me a file not found exception now if I want to handle this what I have to do I have to make use of the try catch block to handle the exception okay let me make use of that try let me place the piece of code which is causing error to me this piece of code let me place it in the try catch and let me tell to the catch block to catch the exception and tell what type of exception it is let me make use of the exception object dot the message property to read what what the message is what the exception message is and let me put this reader dot close in the finally block okay and this reader dot close is showing the red squiggly let me uh, figure out what it is okay let me over on this telling like it does not exist oh, okay the problem is I have defined it here control X let me define outside the class itself the method okay um, let me make it null fine and what I have to do here is if uh, reader not equal to null then close the reader object okay and this works fine now let me run the program okay it gives me a message link like could not find the file e dot e slash read write and the particular file now let me check it vice versa let me give the complete file name correct file name and let me run the application now it prints allow anchor okay fine this works fine now our objective is to learn the await in catch and finally block and you can observe here according to msdn the awaiter operator is applied to a task in an asynchronous method 
to suspend the action of the method until the awaited complete task. Okay. The asynchronous method in which await is used must be modified by the async keyword. Okay. Now in this session, let me show you how to use the await in catch as well as finally block. So, so uh, to do that, let me jump back here and what I'll do is, um, okay, let me create a method. First of all, let me create a class. Okay, this is the class which I'm having. Let me minimize it. Okay, let me create a class. The class name is, let me give it as uh, demo alpha. Okay, now let me make it public also. Okay, let me create a method called public async. Okay, and void um, method thrown exception. The method name is method thrown. Thrown exception. Okay, this is the method name and keep in mind this is async method. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll uh, cut this piece of code what I've done in this main method and I'll place it in um, and I'll place it in this uh, async method thrown exception. Okay, now what shall I do is let me show you how to use await keyword sorry await and catch as well as finally block. For example, in this catch I want to see um, for example when I pass the wrong file name it will show you uh, the file not found exception apart from that if you want to see at what time uh, the exception was caught so let me uh, what I'll do is let me create um, okay let me create a method which does that to do that what I'll do is private private async task log and here let me print something like okay it's throwing me error okay let me okay what I have to do is I have to print outside this control V and let me write at what time the message like I want to print the date and time so what I'll do is um, sorry uh, date is equal to let me make use of the placeholders to make my output beautiful date and time let me pass and here instead of putting comma let me why not I pass and okay and time equals let me make use of the placeholder again just to make my code beautiful display beautiful on this console screen now let me call the date time class in that we have something called now then let me convert into two uh, long date string fine okay now I'm having another one like uh, I want to pass the time date time dot now or two time string two long time string fine okay what I'm doing here is in this log method I am trying to uh, print the time as well as the date and since you can observe this this is a async task what I'm writing here I'm written in the async task log method the data I'm printing in within this method okay now what I have to do is I want to call this log in this catch okay now how do I call it with the await keyword sorry a w a i t await let me call that method log you can observe okay fine now um, what my finally block is doing it is closing the file that is reader object if it not equal to null okay instead of placing here let me write another async task which does that work private okay private async okay async uh, task and it is like uh, close details close okay let it be close because this method is going to do that work like it is going to close that reader object once the file has been read okay control X and let me place it here and let me call the method here what I have to use I have to use the await keyword again here and the method name is sorry close okay fine 
now you can observe okay oh, I'm not I've de defined it here let me define outside the class also now I have to define the class scope okay, you can observe the red squiggly vent okay now my objective is I what I've done I've shown you how to use the await as well as await await in the catch as well as finally block what is this await doing it's just uh, calling it's having a method called log uh, the, what, the, what is this log method doing? It's just printing the date and time at what time the message at what time the stream class is not able to read the file. Okay, and your this async task close. What it is doing is it's just uh, closing. It's closing the reading uh, reader object once uh, the reading has complete. Once the once the stream class has completely read the file. Okay, that's what it's doing. And now uh, you can observe here. I've used the await keyword as well as Await keyword in catch as well as finally block and that's what we learned in this session how to make use of await keyword in catch as well as finally block and let me run this piece of code what I have to do is I have to go and call this method in the met in the main program so let me create an object of that class demo alpha uh, da equals new demo alpha fine and da dot when I method through an exception and let me run this program now uh, the file name what I've given is correct so what is the output I'll get let me see the output what I'll get is allo hang pro okay this works fine but uh, if I wanted to make some error here if I'm giving the wrong file name and let me run the program okay what it is doing is it is telling like what message it is what exception message like it is like could not find the file and also you can observe it is printing like date uh, Saturday June 18 and 2016 and the time is 647 and 7 seconds okay that's what it did it came here once the file name is wrong it caught the exception and it is exp uh, and it is uh, doing this piece of work also it is calling the log method and we have done using the await here and that's what what I've shown in this session is to make how to make use of await in catch as well as finally block and that's the importance of this session and right now um, what I'll do is we'll jump back into presentation and we saw how to make use of await in catch as well as finally blocks and this is the piece of code what I wrote there you can observe and finally thank you for listening have a great day please subscribe to our youtube channel Lang Pro Training and also we are on Facebook you can like our Facebook page by visiting www.facebook.com slash training we are also on Twitter and we for further references you can refer our websites and we are on LinkedIn too and last but not the least don't forget to give the feedback thank you